Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Alar Khan here and today with the topic, with the next topic of what the properties of the ROC of Z transform. So we see the properties of ROC of what? Of the Z transform. So we know this very well. So, first of all, what is ROC? ROC is the region of convergence. It is the range of those values for which the Z transform of X of N or equivalently the discrete time Fourier transform of X of N into R to the power negative N converges. We know this, right? This is the definition. This is the ROC of the Z transform. Okay, the discrete time Fourier transform has its own ROC. Fine. So, anyways, we we talk about them one by one. The ROC of X of Z is a circle or a ring. The ROC associated with, or you could say, of X of Z uh, will be. A circle or a ring. Uh, now, when is this a ring? So you would you would see that very in the examples. Uh, will be a circle or a ring and centered about the origin. Centered about the origin. So this is the first property, and this you know very well. We will be relating it to the Laplace transform. That is the the, the, discrete, the count, continuous time counterpart of it. Okay. Over there, you had lines, straight lines, parallel to the j omega axis, right? Over here, you have circles in the z plane, and the center of the circle is always the origin. Okay. You have a circle as a reference, so sometimes outside the circle is the ROC, sometimes inside, but we have a circle, right? Okay, the second is, of course, of course, uh, the very simple that the ROC of X of Z does not contain any poles. This is the second and of course you know why is this like this because at poles the function does not remain analytical the pole is the singularity of the function which means what at pole the function becomes infinite so the ROC does not contain any pole and you know this very well from the previous topics as well that the ROC cannot contain any poles. Number third for a right sided signal. For a right sided signal, you know this again. For a right sided signal, the ROC of X of Z lies what? Lies outside a particular circle. Lies outside a particular circle and this you know very well no uh, but uh, wait 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 let it be like this that it lies outside the outermost pole it lies outside the outermost pole and how is this? So if you have the pole zero plot, if you have it uh, uh, like this, let's say if this is a pole at one, we have a pole at two, we have a pole at minus one. So, so the outermost pole, which means it's the distant, the more distant from the origin is, is what? It's two. So the circle would be of of, of radius 2 and we know that this right this is a right side signal so it would lie outside of it so the ROC would be all the region outside the radius of 2 is that fine it is the fourth would be the exact opposite but let me have a point over here that if X of n is a causal signal then the ROC would include Z is equal to infinity point Z is equal to infinity point. We have a point that if in, in, in this one, okay, if X of N is a 
causal signal and what is a causal signal a causal signal is that x of n is 0 for n less than 0 right so if we have this sort of a signal right yes this is the right sided signal so what would we have for this sort of a signal uh, the ROC of X of Z, this I have written the same point again anyway, the right side signal or the causal signal. So the ROC of this, the ROC of the corresponding X of Z will include, will include what? Z is equal to infinity. This would include Z is equal to infinity point. Okay. So let us come to, how do we do this? We know the example, let's say we have a delta of N minus 1. We have a shifted impulse. So please, you do this by yourself. The, this would have, uh, this would uh, be 1 over Z. The corresponding uh, Z transform would be 1 over Z. So have a look, we can put with the ROC is the entire Z plane except Z equal to 0. So which means that this includes Z is equal to infinity point. Fine. Number 4. For a left sided signal, the ROC of X of Z lies inside the innermost pole. Inside the innermost pole. Fine. So how is this again? So have a look. If we have a pole at 1, if we have a pole at 2, at a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, let's say. So what is the innermost pole? The innermost is the, 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 the nearest to the origin. So the circle would be over here of radius 1. And the ROC would be the region inside this circle. Fine. Similarly, we have a point over here again. That if X of N is an anti-causal signal, that is it exists. So that is X of N is 0 for N greater than 0 if x of n is anti-causal which means what that x of n is 0 for n greater than 0 the ROC of this signal the ROC of x of z would have what will include z is equal to 0 point will include z is equal to 0. Now we have not seen examples but you can do this by yourself if you have a delta of n plus 1 let's say. So have a look this exists at n equal to minus 1. So it's 0 for n greater than 0. The corresponding z transform would come out to be z. So have a look the ROC of this z transform has, is the entire z plane except z is equal to infinity so which means this includes z is equal to 0 point. Is that fine? It is. So why did I write this? Why did I write these properties? These two points, why did I write this? z is equal to infinity and z is equal to uh, 0. So this, maybe you match it to the finite duration signals, right? The book has mentioned if x of n is a finite duration, the ROC is the z plane. So let me write it. Let me write it. Or let's say we write it in the end. Let's say we go in this order. So this was property number four. Number fifth, the left side it is done. Uh, right side it is done. Number fifth is now if x of n is double sided. So what if this is a double sided signal, now what will happen, the ROC will be a ring between two poles. ROC will be a ring between what, between two poles, but it will not include any of the pole, right? None included. None of the pole is included in the ROC. And how is this? How is this? So have a look. Uh, if, if we go through an example, if we let's say go to an example, x of n is equal to, the book has an example, b to the power absolute of n. 
x of n is if b to the power absolute of n so what do you have for this so can i not write it like this as b to the power n u of n right plus b to the power minus n u of negative n negative 1 can i yes i can so have a look let's say this is my x1 signal this is my x2 signal so x1 signal i already know a to the power in u of n right so for x2 i would only calculate it and how do i do it so you know this very well that uh so i could write it like this that x2 of z would be what this would be a summation n running from negative negative infinity till negative one right so n is running from negative infinity to negative one i have b to the power minus of n and in this case uh, this uh, u would be one so i will multiply it directly to z to the power negative n i could write it as n running from negative infinity to negative one b z negative uh negative n right so now have a look i have i have to use a formula uh, any and i've given you those through three basic formula so none of them matches over here so let's say i i change the variable let let uh, my i have another variable m is equal to minus of n so that n when approached negative infinity would imply that m approaches positive infinity and when n approaches negative one would imply that m approaches positive one and then you know i can change the order of the summation so if i change the order of the summation i change it at m equal to 1 to infinity okay so and i have b z whole to the power m so now have a look 1 to infinity a to the power m is the formula i have 1 over 1 minus a right the formula is no 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 wait 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 I have 1 over 1 minus a, but that is when it runs from 0 to infinity. But over here I have 1 to infinity. So let me open it. If I have bz plus bz whole squared plus bz whole cubed plus up to infinity. So I could write, I could take bz common and then I could write 1 plus bz plus bz squared plus bz cubed plus up to infinity so have a look the corresponding x2 of z would come out to be what x2 of z this would come out to be bz is this one and you have a 1 over 1 minus a for this so you have a 1 over 1 minus a is what a is your bz so this is your x2 of z so and and we also need to find the corresponding roc so you could find it from anywhere from the summation you could find it from here you could find it from here let's say over here in terms of n so you have to put n equal to minus infinity so if you put minus infinity this minus is already present so this would become a plus infinity so which means if you have to put bz to the power plus infinity this means that bz should be less than one the roc is what that b into r uh, should be less than one right and, and why am i talking about r so because we have the uh, the exponential term for the roc for roc what do we have b z should be less than or less than one and of course we are interested in b r to the power negative n exponential of negative j omega n so we are not interested in this so for our roc b r to the power negative n should be less than one isn't it like this it is and not to the power negative one negative n no this is the power b r should be less than one which means that r should be less than one over b r should be less than 1 over b or you could say that the that the absolute of z so i would write it over here the absolute of z should be less than 1 over b this is the roc for this signal so now over here if you combine x1 and x2 so the overall for this thing for this signal my overall uh, x of z would become what for this it's 1 over 1 minus something you know this right so 1 over 1 minus bz inverse for this and then you have a plus bz over 1 minus bz so the book has you know uh, further simplified it as well and the roc i would write so you could do whatever simplification you need so for this you have the roc that the 
So the, 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 the magnitude of Z should be greater than B. For this you have the ROC that the magnitude of Z should be less than 1 over B. Alright, so what would be the overall ROC? That the magnitude of Z could be greater than should be less should be greater than B should be less than 1 over B. Isn't it fine? It is. And when is this possible? It is only possible. It is only possible if the value of B is bit less than 1. Only possible if the absolute of B is less than 1. Or what? Or that B lies between 0 and 1. Is that fine? So I told you what would be the ROC? It would be a ring and, 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 and let me draw that ring. If I, if I draw that ring somewhere over here, so if this is the, so let's say this is one pole, and let's say this is the other pole, so now have a look, this was a double sided signal right, so, so this, the, the region in between the two poles, this would now be the ROC of it in which this pole would correspond to the left side portion and this pole would correspond to the right side portion and in between the ring we have what we have the double sided signals ROC and I hope that is clear this was property number five property number six uh, let's say first I remove the board Okay, property number six. Property number six is again if x of n is right sided, if x of n is a right sided sequence, and if the ROC includes a circle, and if ROC includes a circle of what? Of radius z absolute is equal to r naught then any circle then all the finite values of z for which then all the finite values of z for which z absolute is greater than r naught will be in the ROC and this you know very well this you can relate to the Laplace transform that we had what we had a strip if one strip was included so the right sided anything greater was included if you draw it graphically first so what is the thing the thing is like this that if you have uh, let's say if this is the circle and outside this we have the ROC outside this we have the ROC so so this is a right sided signal right so this would be the ROC for any general right sided signal outside of a particular circle so then we are talking about another circle of radius R naught this is a circle of radius R naught so have a look the radius of the circle R naught the circle of the radius are not is included in the ROC so then for any finite value for any finite value of Z that is greater than R naught would also be included in the ROC and you could see this graphically very well fine if you see mathematically so what would be the case that R to the power negative N would converge quickly we have an exponential signal right so if this is an exponential signal right this is for r to the power of uh, negative n so if you have now r1 to the power negative n such that r1 is greater than r so now it would uh, converge quickly right so this is also included in the roc similarly similarly if you have the opposite of this that if 
your x of n is left sided sequence and roc includes a circle of z absolute equal to r naught so then for any value then all finite values for z absolute is less than r naught so any finite value that z absolute is less than r naught will also be in the roc of the circle this was for right side for left side you would have a divergence the other would grow up quickly let me say it graphically we've already seen the mathematics portion of it let's say if this is the the any particular circle uh, of the equation which we are talking about right so this is the equation circle and this is the roc for any general left sided signal like this right now they say what that you have you have a circle of r naught that is included in the roc so this is an a circle of radius r naught so if this is included in the roc so you can see it with your eyes as well directly without any explanation that any finite value of z for which the value of r naught is less than this so that would also be included in the roc this is property number six number seven number seven state what that if uh, x of n left side signal and the x of n includes the circle so number seven we are done yes number seven we are done so you have the eighth of a finite duration signal now if x of n is a finite duration signal is a finite duration signal so what do we have the roc of x of z would be the entire s plane the roc of x of z will be the entire z plane and of course except the possibility of what z is equal to zero or z is equal to infinity and this we know very well again from the discrete f Fourier transform that these two could be exceptional and it, otherwise it would include the entire z plane if we have an example if we have an example so we have simpler examples but uh, 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 you know let's say we go for a little tricky example and where is it it is over here let's say if i have say x of n is equal to a to the power n for some time and that time is from 0 to n minus 1 from 0 to n minus 1 and it's zero otherwise and you are asked to find the corresponding uh, what the corresponding z transform so have a look this exists for a finite duration of time zero to n minus one so if i write the z transform so x of z would be what it would be the summation n would run from zero till n minus one right a to the power n and you have a, 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 a z to the power minus n fine now what do i do i take this a z inverse told to the power n right i could do it like this that n runs from 0 to n minus 1 with a z inverse whole to the power n i can and now i can uh, uh, you know uh, g g g apply the formula I can apply the formula that when it runs from to the finite number that is from n running from 0 to n uh, let's say I write the formula over here n running from 0 to capital N a to the power small n so this is 1 over 1 minus a n plus 1 divided by 1 minus a n let me check so 1 minus a n plus 1 1 minus a yes it's fine it is fine so what do we have we have it like this we have it that it would be 1 over 1 minus a is this thing a z inverse whole to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus a z inverse and isn't it like this it is no 
No, it is not. n plus 1, so over here our n is in minus 1. So we have n plus 1 minus 1, so it would become n. You could do your mathematical games. You could split it, you could, you could, you could simplify whatever you want to do. I cannot do anything more. I am now interested in the ROC of it. I am now interested in the ROC of it. Which means what? If I could write it like this, let's say we simplify it. So if I write my x of z as this thing, 1 minus a z inverse to the power n, right? So can I write it a to the power n divided by z to the power n? And then divide by 1 minus a upon z. Taking uh, commons, uh, so I will have z to the z into z into z to the power n minus a to the power n. Divide by z into z minus a. No, no, directly z minus a. z minus a divided by z, right? I have z minus a divided by z over here, so this z comes over here. And this I have z to the power n minus a to the power n divided by z to the power n, so this comes over here. So this is for the numerator, this is for the denominator, right? Now, now have a look. What can I do? And I could further write it as well as 1 over z to the power n minus 1 into z to the power n minus a to the power n and divide by z minus a, z minus a. So this was a finite duration signal we know and this ROC could include the entire Z plane with the possibility of leaving behind zero and infinity. So we check for those two possibilities. We know that the transfer, we know that the function could not be evaluated at the poles of the function, right? So where are the poles? Z to the power n minus one means what? This Z to the power n minus one. This z to the power n minus 1 means what? We have poles of order n minus 1 at where? At the origin at z equal to 0. So these are the poles of the function. Fine. So numerator by denominator z minus a cancel could be in pole at 0. So, you would be talking about this pole as well. You would say that we have a pole at z equal to a, but no, we do not have a pole at z equal to a. Why? Because when you put down the values of n, so we would have a factor of z minus a over here in the numerator as well. So that numerator would cancel the z minus a of the denominator and the effect of this pole would be cancelled by the effect of the zero. So the only poles that we have or we are interested in is this one. The n minus one order pole at the origin z equal to zero. Fine. Similarly, the zeros. About the zeros, what do we have? The zeros are at, wait, zeros, so we have z to the power n. For zeros, what do we do? For zeros, let's say I take the green color, or let's say first I take the blue. z to the power n should be equal to a to the power n, right? But we know that z could not be equal to a. Why? Because then this would cancel out this thing, right? So what do we have? We have z is equal to, if we put it like this, z is equal to a exponential of j 2 pi by n times k. Right? Now if I put a z to the power n, z to the power capital N, so this would be a to the power n, exponential of j 2 pi k upon n, right? <coughs> so which means again z to the power n is equal to to the power n, but we have what? We have the exponential term. So which means the zeros of this function, the zeros of this function, and let me write over here, zeros are lying at what? At z equal to this thing, at z equal to a, Exponential of j k 2 pi by n, where k is equal to 1, 2, 2, and minus 1, and this is the thing. This is the thing. 
So this was a book example, so therefore I solved it. Otherwise you could have seen it in, 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 in simpler terms that if you have a finite duration signal, so the impulse signal is a finite duration signal, let's say we have a delta fn minus 1. You have a delta fn minus 1. So if you calculate the corresponding z transform, this would be 1 over z. So for this, what would be the ROC? For this, the ROC is what? It is the, the entire z plane except what? z equal to z equal to 0. And we already saw for delta of n plus 1, which was included in minus so to the left side signal. So over there again, it's a finite duration signal and it does not include z equal to infinity point. So that is it. That uh, These are the properties of it. And one property I said that if that for a right sided signal, when we are talking about the poles and the zeros, so that we talk about the rational Laplace transforms. So if uh, uh, we have a rational Z transform, right? If we have a rational Z transform, so the ROC of that sort of X of Z is either bounded by poles or it extends to infinity so this is one i missed so the, i talked about if roc if if this is a right side signal so it's so the roc is the outside the outermost pole if our left side signal inside the innermost pole but that is when that is when if we have a rational z transform so for rational z transform roc is bounded by poles or it extends to infinity so you mean those two properties are the sub properties of this one that is it for this video. That is it. Yes, I finished this video over here. See you in the next video very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel and keep liking and watching the videos. Goodbye.